going to be part two of this video series, uh, the one that's going to deal with this spreadsheet right here that kind of shows the table of how we're going to handle uh, different restorations and how we're going to treat the restoration, the tooth, and then um, how what kind of cement we're going to use when we're trying to put these two things together. So right now we're going to be talking about what we do to prepare the tooth. So it's this stuff over here in green. We'll be talking about these um, these things right here, and uh, and that'll be the end of this video. So let's skip down to that part of the slideshow, and here we are, treating the tooth. There's a few basic things to know first about treating a tooth, especially if we're gonna be bonding something to it. There's three components needed whenever we're gonna be bonding, whether it even be a filling or putting in a resin bait or resin cement to put in a crown, a veneer, something like that. There is three components needed in order to make this bond occur. You need to have etch, you need to have primer, and you need to have adhesive. And over the years, they've come up with different formulations on how to do this. Uh, they used to have etch be one step, then the primer, and then the adhesive. It always is going to go in that order, by the way. And then they decided to combine the, the, um, the primer and the adhesive together and lift the etch as a separate step. Then they put the etch and the primer together and it had the adhesive be a separate step. And then they put all three into one bottle. Um, let's kind of go over what those things mean. Uh, first of all, phosphoric acid is the etch that we use. This is not hydrofluoric acid. I'm sorry, this is not, yeah, not hydrofluoric acid. This is phosphoric acid. This is the tip that comes in this blue uh, gel-like material, and this is what's needed before uh, you can put any kind of bonding stuff on top of a tooth. Uh, let's see here. Okay, most of the time we're going to use this. It's going to be this blue material, although they do make a red liquid material, and this is the stuff that we use on teeth. What does that really do to the teeth? We've seen teeth before it gets etched, and it looks perfectly smooth, especially the enamel. But after we etch it and rinse it and dry it, it looks kind of like a like a glass or like a glazed look. I'm sorry, not a glazed look, but like a sandy kind of look. Uh, it just looks etched, and it looks like it's somehow roughened. And so microscopically, this is what's going on. Uh, when the etch is applied, it's an acid. When you rinse it off, it kind of creates all these little. Uh, uh, tags or a little kind of a rough surface across that glassy-like surface. Uh, to dentin, what happens is the dentin, which is made up of like a bunch of little tubules, if you cut it in cross-section, it almost looks like Swiss cheese. When you acid etch that and rinse it, all that gets cleaned off and these little tubules open up. So when you go through the etch process, what happens is, uh, let's, let's back up a little bit. When we prep a tooth, Okay, we're applying a burr, usually a diamond burr or a carbide burr, but most of the time it's going to be um, a diamond. You're going to leave behind like a little thin layer. They call it a smear layer. Just think of it as kind of like dentin and enamel sludge left on this tooth surface. And when you get down to the dentin layer, what happens is you have this layer that's on the, uh, on the prep surface of the tooth. And then when you apply the blue etch, what happens is after you rinse it off, that smear layer gets dissolved and goes out with the etch. And what's left behind is this little network of dentin that now is able to allow bonding agent to flow inside there and lock uh, and make that resin actually stick to the tooth. On the surface of that resin or the bonding agent now allows you to put composite resin and stack that or a resin-based cement on top of it. So this is how it basically works. works. You have this uh, smear layer that's on there, etch, rinse, uh, the stuff that gets kind of clogged down inside of the little tubes, that gets cleaned out as well. And then you get this webby kind of uh, layer to the dentin. And then when you apply your adhesive, uh, the bonding agent, and it kind of works its way into, into that web and goes down inside of the um, actual, actual tubules itself. We do a step before, however, in putting, before we put our bonding agent on, we're actually going to use a desensitizer. And there's a few of them out there. There's Glumo, there's this Microprime G. Um, basically what it is, it's a way of going in and, and it basically kind of calms the tooth down. You think of it that way. It kind of blocks some of those tubules. Uh, it still will allow the bonding agent to get inside where it needs to go. But it just it removes that uh, the, those little tubes have got fluid. And if there's fluid, you can stop the movement of fluid. You don't have sensitivity. When fluid moves around inside those tubules, that's when patients experience sensitivity. So some of the key points in these instructions is that um, basically what it's doing, it's helping uh, reduce post-op sen sensitivity by supporting that collagen framework. The collagen framework is this webby purple stuff right here. When you apply it on there, you paint it on there, and you just have to wait for about 30 seconds or so. 
and then um, you're going to dry it off, not completely dry it off, just get it dry enough. A good e example of that is if you're going to lick your finger and blow on it, that. That's how dry you want to leave it. Uh, I alluded to this earlier. I had this, this system here of all these different etchings and primings and adhesive. This is, again, how this has played out over the most recent years. The fourth generation, which was that first example we saw, you would etch, rinse and dry, apply a primer, air thin that, apply adhesive, air thin, and then light cure. After that came the fifth generation, and that was etch, rinse and dry, then the primer adhesive was in one bottle, you would paint that onto the tooth, air thin it, and then cure. Then, then they put the etch and the primer together and separated out the adhesive, and then did it that way. And then how we are, here we are now at the seventh generation, which they put all three of those into one bottle, and then you apply it to the tooth, and you air thin um, and cure. So here it is again, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh generation of bonding agents and how they've been formulated. Uh, the one that we're gonna use is this seventh generation bonding agent, at least that's how it's classified. It's called Clear Fill Universal Bond Quick. Um, that is kind of a pricey product, all of them really are. If one milliliter is 20 drops, and this is a five milliliter bottle, and it's 100 drops, that's $153 a bottle. That means it's about $1.53 a drop. So you want to use just the most minimum amount needed. You don't want to have any waste uh, left over. So you don't fill up the entire little well with this stuff. You just put one drop in there, and that's enough to usually get you by for a couple of teeth, actually. It definitely would be enough for just one tooth. But how we use it in our office is a little bit different. We're gonna, although this is the seventh generation, according to instructions, we can bypass the etch. It doesn't mention anything about it desensitizing. You could just apply this and cure it and go right on to your resin or your composite. But in our office, we're going to actually etch. It's an optional step, but I have just found that over the years, we get very nice adhesion and studies show that you do get a better bond if you etch and then apply this bonding agent. But in between those two steps, we're gonna apply this desensitizer as well. Again, this kind of just shows the different etching techniques. You can have the thing where you just apply this onto the tooth directly. You could just maybe etch the enamel, but not the dentin, which is kind of tricky to do, or you can just etch the entire thing, both the dentin and the enamel, rinse it off, and then go forward. And that's what we do at our office. Here's the nice thing about this product. Um, you can do any one of those three that you like. We just happen to choose this one. But then when you rinse and dry, after now we've applied our desensitizer, when it comes time to apply the bonding agent, you apply it and there is no waiting time. And this is great because a lot of times things in an office move quickly and waiting around for 20 seconds or 30 seconds can seem like a really long time when you have especially a series of teeth to work on. So we like applying this one and uh, because you can go right to curing it right away. And this is great because it decreases the technique sensitivity required to handle this product. A couple of other things, though, before we move on to the next part, and that is all these instructions that I'm reading on these different manufacturers and comparing the different bonding agents and so forth, they all mention to not use any kind of peroxide-based um, agents on these teeth before you start trying to apply uh, these bonding agents. Uh, the reason being is it interferes with the bond. And so for years, I think we had applied superoxal many times to veneers, uh, right before I bond them in, you know, especially when we take off the temporaries to get rid of that kind of black scuzzy layer. And this superoxal will definitely remove it. However, it does have a tendency, or at least according to the manufacturer's instructions, that it can weaken the bond. So uh, we have used this in the, in the past. It's even been recommended by different people on the lecture circuit. But I think we're finding out now, now that that might be a risk not worth taking. It might be better to just spend the time to get whatever debris off of the teeth instead of using this product. Okay, so coming up next, we're gonna talk about the different uh, restorative materials, but this is video number two, talking about how we treat the tooth prior to cementing or bonding a restoration. All right, thanks.